the suffering in question, the suffering of intellectual life, the suffering of a life of reading, writing, and studying is in part the, the suffering involved with a discipline of giving up distractions, giving up short-term gratification, giving up the, the sort of instant euphoria that leaves you feeling sicker later. Um, all of that has to be given up and it's painful. Um, you can know it's the right thing to do, but it hurts. If you try to sit alone in a room like Pascal recommended, turn off all your devices, you are not going to like it. I'm not going to like it, and you're not going to like it. Um, and that's pain. That's part of the suffering of intellectual life. And the other part is, um, you know, you confront some piece of reality, and reality is not what you want it to be. Um, it's not your fantasy of it. It's not how you imagined it. It's the real thing. On the other hand, I think in those moments when your wishful thinking collapses against reality, you find some truth that was not exactly what you thought it was. That can happen when you're reading a book. That can happen when you're thinking about politics. That can happen in your personal life. That can happen in all kinds of ways. But in that moment, for me, there's a bit of joy, a little fragment of joy that I am not in control of this that the world does not go according to my will, that the world is not the way I imagine it, that I cannot have my own way. And that joy is a little glimpse of the fact that there is a God who is guiding my life, who knows better than I do what is good and what will bring me happiness.